Hey, we're live. We're live. Hello, welcome to episode 62 of the Wide Awake in Babylon podcast. I'm Chris, your host. <laughs> I'm the Tom. one that talks too much, basically. Um, um, Tom. Tom. And according to a shirt, he may just start talking about Bitcoin, so. Yeah, it's a birthday <laughs> gift. He might. Andy. Andy is our, is our neighbor. Hey there. Right? So we like to have a community that includes neighbors, right? Because that's actually what it is, right? Mm -hmm. Communities, people you live around. Not some ethereal thing you have on the internet. I don't know any of those people. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Andy comes up here. He helps us with projects. He participates with us here. Uh, he's we're all learning. He joins in learning, right? Yeah. yeah. He's a very good person. Nice to have you here. Thank you, Isaac. He's our producer. He's sitting back there. He makes all of this magic happen. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> and we have Jenny, a longtime Hi. friend, a let's just say a orbiting member. <laughs> Of our little clan, right? Yeah. She comes in and out, in and out, in and out. Many times in the jungle. Yeah, she's by herself out there. Mm -hmm. this, yes. one, this woman is what I call a strong woman. She's gone to the jungle by herself yeah. more than once. Right? Might She'll do it go. again this, by the end of the year. We'll yeah. see. Yeah. I think every trotting. time I've been to the jungle, Jenny's been there too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 She's dedicated to learning. Yeah. Brave learning as well. Brave learning. <laughs> mm -hmm. Would you have it any other way? Probably not, no. I mean, once you go through it, you're like, hell yeah. I, I got balls. <laughs> well, I got courage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got you to gotta bring some femininity to all this toxic masculinity that goes Indeed. on. Indeed. And Wally, you loving it here? I love it. Yeah. It's real life. It is. Yeah. Real life is good. Is it, is it hard sometimes? Yeah. <laughs> would, would you like, have it any other way? No. I, I think like I knew what I was getting into when I moved up here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know. I feel like it, become, it becomes easier. It's like easier to like handle each day. Like, so, mm -hmm. yeah. It makes you come stronger. Yep. It's quieter in mind. Yeah. More focused on what's important. Can't, you know, like we say. He who chases two rabbits doesn't catch either one. <laughs> right? I heard that for the first time last episode. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, we went to California last weekend. Yeah. We went to a music festival. We, we saw music. We saw music. As Eddie said, it's a chance for the people that love these songs to hear these songs performed by the people that wrote them. Huh? And it's like, I was like, wow, it's a great honor. Mm -hmm. Eddie Vedder's uh, Ohana Fest. Yep, yep. Yeah, we saw Pearl Jam for two nights. Mm -hmm. That was amazing. I enjoyed and, that. And who did you see before the first night? Devo. <laughs> and what did you think of Devo? Are we not men? We are Devo. <laughs> are we not men? We are D-E-V-O. Oh, man, they rocked. 74-year-old dude up there <laughs> with the craziest looking glasses on. They're wearing the hats. They're doing the whole thing. And, I, you know, I never, in the 80s, I mean, I remember Whip It, Into Shape, Keep It Up. You know, that song. I remember that. And then... a. A the, couple bars of another. The Rolling Stone songs can't get yeah, no yeah, satisfaction. Can't get no such as faction. <laughs> and that yeah, version yeah, is yeah. more popular than the Stones, I think. Yeah. yeah. Well, it was so that was all I knew of them. And I just stood there with my jaw hanging the whole time. <laughs> I mean, to me, I think they were the, the most incredible band mm -hmm. we saw. Lannis Morissette. Oof, she's awesome. Wow. <laughs> just, that was still good. Oh. Very jealous wow. of that one. Yeah. Wow. Another one of those strong women, you know, went through all that shit. Pretty sure, you know, she was in Nickelodeon as a kid. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure she knows some things and went through some things, but she's a strong feminine presence, you know, and yeah, everybody was on their feet. Oh, yeah. Yep. And then we saw who was it? Uh, oh, Pearl Jam. When they, when the they were idols. great. The Idols. Do you remember that? So oh, there's a band idols. called oh. I-D-L-E-S, Idols. I left. And they're from Britain. The guy comes out with pink hair and a brown beard and just grungy as hell. He's punching himself in the face while he's singing this song. Oh, he's punk. He's, yeah. I mean, but he has, you know, I'm standing there. So I'm like, man, this music's really weird. I'm like, well, you know, the name of the song is I'm a Car Crash. Yeah. Kind of obvious when you look at him up there on the stage. But I'm standing there. I figured, you know, I hadn't seen punk in a long time. So I was just going to go stand up front. 
And I forgot <laughs> all those years, because it's been 20 some years. I used to go to Fender's Ballroom on a regular basis, watch mosh pits. You know, be on the outskirts of them. I wasn't really a violent guy. Never have been, so it wasn't any my thing. But all of a sudden, he comes out. The guy comes out. He's like, all right, I want the crowd to divide left to right. I want a big aisle right down the middle. I'm thinking he's going to come walking down, you know, watch him walk back and forth. Nope. He says, all right, y'all love each other, right? You're all going to take care of each other? Now get ready to collide. I'm like, yeah, no. And I just walked out, and they all just smashed together. It's been a while since I've been to something like that. I have to say something about Southern California because I used to live there and I visit my sister who lives out there. Um, It's a really interesting thing because you can get anything you want there. You can do pretty much anything that's marketed is there. Everything. And so it's full of all this activity. It's full of all this traffic, all these products, all these stores, all these homes, boom, 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 boom. And it's going to sound judgmental, and I really don't care. The people are vacant. There's just like, hello, hello. It's like there's nobody home. It's all wrapped up in the play of it all. And, you know, it was just hard to find anybody that was at home. You know, the lights are on. You can see that there's like a person there, not just a consumer. You know, and it's... It's it's a, such a heavy vibration on me. I mean, I'm sure it's not on them. I mean, they live there. But living in the woods and then going there to see the contrast of that and just, it just, I just feel like my energy just gets and the body starts to ache. You know, you just kind of feel a little irritated. I mean, I can handle it. I can do that. I get, you know, so yeah, I understand. I'm not going to go ballistic or go nuts or freak out go shove somebody no no i'm just gonna sit on my sister's patio and just relax until it's time to go do something and then we'll go do something and i'll you know i kind of try to hey 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 hey, hi 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 yeah no it just doesn't work but occasionally maybe but it it, you know and i look at that life in the city and it's like that is not it's weird i'm not saying that i think it all needs to go away I think there's an element to it that is stealing the soul. And there's all these goals orientated there for you know, some kind of form of success. But it's just like your well-being is getting so taxed all the time. All the time, you know. And you'll ask people, you all right? No, oh, yeah, I'm doing great. It's like, but then you watch. It's like, yeah, we got a lot of conflict going on, mm-hmm. you know. It's like. Oh, I was just going to say, I was thinking about this earlier today, one of my weird little thoughts. Cities seem like they are machines, like abstract machines that are abstract or uh, extracting social energy from everybody. Mm-hmm. And no one even knows that they're involved in it. Right. <clears throat> like a matrix of sorts. Yeah. Because yeah. you've been out of it. You've left. I have yeah. left. Yeah, I've been out for a year. And it's funny, most of my city friends, when I call them, I won't pick up anymore. <laughs> They think wow. I've gone feral or something out here. Yeah. <laughs> Which half true. Half true. It's amazing what the imagination of people can do. Yeah. You live in the woods. What are you doing up there? It's You're not like, working. It's like, what are you projecting into my life right now? Uh-huh. You know what I mean? It's like, there's so much of that. That's why it's like, I don't, all of the spiritual communities, plant medicine communities is like, what are you trying to project into other people's lives? Do you understand that a lot of people are doing that, right? Just projecting, projecting, and projecting. It's like, that's rude as far as I'm concerned. Mm-hmm. You know, we're all on individual paths here, right? Do your best not to hurt anyone. Do your best to not, you know, manipulate anybody. Take advantage of them. Control, coerce. Try not to do any of that. And, you know, your path is your path. Theirs is theirs. You should respect theirs as much as you want them to respect yours. Do you have to adhere to it? No. Mm-mm. There's nothing to adhere to. And just watching all this, it's just... It, 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 it's kind of disgusting, actually. I find it eh, just because it is. It's like one giant projection. You know, oh, this person, you know, just all of it, all of it. People have perceptions and they think it's the truth. They think it's like a clear view of, of what's actually taking place. And that's not necessarily the case. You know, so I, I'm more inclined to be with people who just want to live a life you know what i mean just a, a real life doing real work 
you know, taking care of the internal as much as the external. Right. And there's not always something exciting to talk about with all that. No. And, and, and in those moments, it's, I find that around here with us, when we get into those moments where there's nothing to say, it's almost like we don't have to sit there in some awkward silence and we wait for the next thing to say. We can sit in silence and let that energy build and just look, hey, whew, like the acknowledgement's already there. So it just keeps amplifying and amplifying and amplifying. And just being able to sit in that in comfort. Because right? you look at anybody in the eyes too long and, you know, an energy exchange starts to happen, they get nervous. Tense, well, well, it starts to be like, mm -hmm. I gotta look away, I gotta look away, I gotta look away. And people think that's, and then you got a whole another faction of people, that's weird. Why would you do that? You know, so you're right there. You can see that everybody's on a completely different path. You know, what someone needs to understand in this lifetime, someone else might have figured it out several lifetimes ago. You know what I mean? And I think the people that truly have figured it out, they're not making a big deal about it. They're not like, look at me. I'm going to teach you how to be a shaman. I have a mystery school. I have all this experience and I know I can make a shaman out of you. You know, like, what the fuck is all that? <laughs> what the hell is anyone doing? Right? It's like, to me, those things should come by organically and naturally. Right? If you decide that you want to wander, you want to participate in the other side, well, not even really the other side, in the wholeness of life, that's your business. And if you are good at it, then you know how to navigate that space and you know how to be responsible in that space and not to project, not to jump to conclusions about anything, just to let the whole event happen and then sit back for three or four days and see what culminates. Pay attention in your daily life and see where it's going to poke its little head out. It just seems like a much better way of doing things. You know what I mean? So what do we want to talk about? Anybody? Anybody? Got a topic? What do you want to talk about? Well, I'm still curious about, because a lot of people live in cities, right? Uh -huh. like you talk to the layman and they'll be like, mm -hmm. well, I love the woods, but I love the city. Like, mm -hmm. There's something about a city that pulls people to it. and Because it's a source of energy. Like you said, there's all this energy. <laughs> and convenience. Hmm? I think convenience is a big one. People don't like to be inconvenienced. Yeah. The lure is the convenience. But you get kind of tired of it. It's more comfortable, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I guess that's how you define comfort. True. Right. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's comfortable. Not like anyway. peace of mind comfort. More <laughs> like, you know. Comfort. Sit on the couch. You mean like yeah. you're running water when you yeah. want it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know something about that. Go I do. I do. years so that. Hey, it's it's called starting at base. <clears throat> yes, it is. And that's, I mean, there's, to me, that takes a lot of courage. It takes a lot of gumption. <clears throat> and it, it takes a lot of integrity to start. To where, you know, okay, we're going back to the damn basics. And start from there and build from there. Builds character for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. And appreciation. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, I'm coming out here. I'm curious if this is your all experience. Almost feels like starting from the basics with myself, like almost starting from <laughs> child stage, <laughs> back on up to adulthood. Yeah. Okay. So what are you still curious yeah, about? Yeah, sorry. I, I lost my I'm chance. just interested in the cities thing because, you know, I, I spent a lot of time in the city having to work different types of jobs and mm -hmm. – well, I did too. Yeah, there's definitely people like the the automated response. Everyone asks and responds with is, "How you doing? Good." <laughs> like if everything has to stay on the surface level in mm -hmm. the city, mm -hmm. and if you start diving beneath that surface level, people start looking at you real weird, right. or they check out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, then there's just events set up for things like that, right? What do you mean? Well, you know, you have like meditation groups, and they all get together and they. Probably talk a little more deeper than the guy in the donut shop or the coffee shop or the insurance office. Yeah, I, I spent some time in like different little communities, not big time like other people, but I saw it was mostly like hookup areas. Like the new age spiritual community is a lot of just people looking to meet their, yeah. <laughs> It's a unicorn meat market. Yeah. It's, it's like a cool thing to do now. You know, like someone today, they asked me, they were like, how long have you been part of the medicine community? And 
I didn't really know how to answer because I don't really consider myself part of the medicine community. And I don't know. It just kind of threw me off because it's like, I was like, I don't really, you know. Well, you know, it's funny because you can call it a medicine community all you want. It's still loaded with people with mental illness. It's still loaded with people with egomaniacal ideas. Yeah. Still loaded with people that have a whole bunch of hang-ups and project into everything. Right? It's full of bums, full of couch surfing people. And, you know, there's quite a number of them out there that are just using it to escape reality. Yeah, it's just another thing, you know, to get lost in or distract yourself. We know someone like that. Mike eats mushrooms every single day. It's like, dude, what are you doing? <laughs> he I don't know him anymore. He decided to go off a cliff. And good for him. But it was every day. It's like, man, what are you doing? You know, it starts mixing all kinds of things together. And it's like, you respect this or not? I mean, you're always in it. You have no home. You rely on everybody to house you. Is that respectful? That when you come over to visit, they're expected to house you? I mean, you know, I know that's a good Christian thing to do as a stranger. But after a while, you're not a stranger. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're just it's that like, guy on the couch. Yeah, you're just that guy on the couch. <laughs> yeah. Waiting to come down enough to be able to drive somewhere else. <laughs> yeah, you, know, you, you got to deal with that. And, you know, in those, when you get in those communities that, I don't think it's really about understanding. I think it's more about kumbaya, that we're all together. And now I feel safe to, you know, what I, I see a lot of, and you know, I may be wrong, people might think this is very wrong, I see a lot of people who are okay as long as there's other people around. That if there's like-minded people doing what they're doing, they can mingle with them for a day or two or ten, right? And it allows them to be on their best behavior. But the minute they pull back, boom, it's just, here we go, into, you know, chaos, mm -hmm. right? You know, people left to their own devices usually – if they haven't learned anything, they end up in chaos. You know, you just start chasing your desires, you know, and I, I find that those plants, especially those plants, if you've got any inkling to or any strong connection to desire or a wild imagination, you're in deep fucking trouble, <laughs> really deep trouble. Because you'll start believing you're a bikini, you're this, you're that. I'm a shaman. I'm a, you know, whatever it is. I'm a healer. I'm a, you know, whatever. A light worker. <laughs> you know, all that stuff. And, you know, it, I, it's interesting that it's gone there. Because in the old days, when, you know, I don't, I'm only talking 30 years ago, 30 some years ago. And there was probably older days than that. But even then, you know, back in the late 80s, early 90s, that that wasn't part of it. All this love and light and fifth dimension and I'm a Dakini and I'm a healer and I'm, you know, that was not really a thing. It was more about learning how to behave, right? How to keep your fucking eyes in your head when the, you know, <laughs> when the grandmothers come in with all the women. Keep your eyes in your head, boy. You know, it's like they would say that to you. It wasn't, you know, look at these goddesses. Look at all the goddesses. They demand, you know, they commanded a respect, you know. Now the, the spiritual new age girl wears her underwear everywhere. And those, those women were all wearing long dresses. Right? It's like, you know, you don't want that attention, but you're going to entice it. You know, and I just find that there's like a real disconnect mm -hmm. of the respect that's necessary. And what it is you're actually learning with these plants. And I think you're learning to discard the lie inside of yourself, the lies you tell yourself, the shortcomings that you have, the things that you're afraid of, to embrace those, to have the hard conversations, right? To be able to sit down with someone that you've had, you know, some kind of animosity under the, you know, underneath the surface with and be able to voice that, that when a conflict arises, you can handle it. I mean, that to me is what they're for. They're, they're, they're for that. It's to live a better life. Not to go off on some tangent or let's get into a festival situation, listen to music, it's super high. I mean, it's, we went to a fish show. Some mm -hmm. friend of mine got me tickets. All I could smell was DMT. It used to be all you smelled was weed. 
now it's just DMT in the air and all these kids are just popping this stuff like crazy. And it's like <laughs> this culture, lack thereof, this pseudo culture, if you will, nouveau culture, it doesn't take anything seriously. So I watch, you know, the people I tend to gravitate towards to develop a deeper relationship with, um, when they go into those plant medicine experiences, they understand that that is them at a different intensity. And they, and they hold that and they work with that. And there's others who just take that as an experience among experiences, mm -hmm. a thing among things. So there's those that truly are developing a relationship with the thing beating their heart, looking out of their eyeballs, the soul, the connection to nature and creator, whatever you want to call that combination. And there's others that their spiritual path is just a, a, a an event among events, experiences among experiences. They'll choose when they're going to do it and they'll choose when they don't want to. You know, I've had a lot of people who have come to me for advice and I'm taking it very seriously. And, and you know, and they dump whatever they got to dump, you know, talking, just get it out. And then the next day they're posting, oh, we're going to Meow Wolf and then I'm going to go do this and I'm going to go do that. It's like... E <laughs> You, won't even you have no skin in the game? They, oh, that's just an experience they had. Now I'm going to have another experience. And now I'm going to have another one and another one and another one ad infinitum. Right? But And well-being is not an experience. You in a higher state is not an experience. It's who you are. You know, And it, where you put the energy really determines where you are at on that, in, in that intensity. Are you just here, just existing? Meh, 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 meh. Right? Or are you amplified and kind of seeing beyond the sky of man's world and see the sky of nature and infinity and, and God? You know, and it, if the energy is not put in that direction, there is none of that. Right? And, and you watch as things progress and people start to, you know, kind of start coming awake like, whoa, the, the clamp comes down harder. <laughs> it's like, the clamp down on the entire world is it's on us. Mm -hmm. It's going to get tighter and tighter and tighter. And, you know, and hopefully you use that to squeeze the remaining bullshit out of yourself so you can live a real life. And, you, you know, I think, you know, for at least the next 20 years that as long as you follow the rules, just follow the rules, but don't participate. Keep your participation in whatever that's going to be to a minimum. Interact with your neighbors, you know, maybe get some food, grow some food, you know, uh, try to don't, I wouldn't say try to find like minded individuals, try to find like guided individuals, right? Because, like, you know, with all of us, everybody brings something very different to the table, but to me, it all comes from the same guided spot. Yeah, we've all had completely different lives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, it, and it works because you follow that guidance within yourself, right? Well, that thing that, you know, you use to follow, guide that soul in you, it's really close to mine to everybody else's. So if we're all like in a congruent spot, then whatever that has you've learned in life and whatever you see gets comes through. From your perspective, which I'm sitting over here looking at it. Now I don't just have my view of it. I have yours too. Right. And I like to take that seriously. And I like to take that at depth, you know, to actually be able to stand in someone else's shoes for just a moment. You know, if not walk, try to walk a mile in them. You know, what Jenny brings to the table, what Wally brings, what everybody here, Tom, you, Isaac, he doesn't think he brings much, but he brings Angela. a ton. Angela brings just just the beauty and the caring. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's funny because that I love that woman more than anything else in the world. Well, my kids and my grandkids, but that's a given. And it's funny because even when I started dating her, I heard all, you know, I mean, Angela's this, Angela's that, she's nursing, she's this, she's that. And I would hear this from people. So when we first started dating, I'm like, seeing how she is, I knew her. I mean, we were friends for a good year. 
before any, any dating of any kind. We would just hang out and just really good to talk to. And I'm looking and just watching the way she is with people. And she just gives it all. It's just like there's no holding back. She, she will just pour it on and watching how she would inspire people. I'm like, and I would even ask her, this can't really be who you are. You're just being on your best behavior. It's like, no, this is actually who I am. I'm like, there's no way in hell you're like this. And it, I've been with her now for eight years. And yeah, she is like that. You know? She infuriates the hell out of some people. Because they don't want to believe that she is that. They want to think there's some ulterior motive. Well, she's doing it for this. Because we live in a culture that is so loaded with self-hatred and self-loathing that they can't, they treat others as they treat themselves. Right? So there's always this, there's they got to be, there's got to be some motive behind it. There's got to be some advantage they're trying to get. You know, there's always those projectors again, projecting into other people's experience as if they have any information about anything at all. Yeah. And it's just, it's been wild because that's exactly who she is. Mm -hmm. Right. And, it's weird. It's like in relationships, you're not, you're not supposed to try to change the person you're with. That is ridiculous. You know what you signed up for. And if you didn't, well, stop signing contracts blind. You know what you signed up for. You know who that, if you pay attention, you'll know who that person is. And, and it, you, we want to, you know, I've met a lot of women in this new age movement. I've met several of them. They come, you know, spend some time with their man, right? And he'll be sitting there. He gets up out to go outside and do something immediately. Well, I'm working on him. It's like, what is it, your fucking project? How in the hell do you really think you're going to do that? You know, I would actually it's narcissism. That. I'm trying to mold somebody into your image. I'm trying to fix him. I'm trying to make him a better <clears throat> man. It's like, you're a woman. How the hell are you going to do that? Kind of slavery issue. <laughs> it, it, it's kind Tricky of Tricky slavery. The person doesn't know. How quickly it turns into that. Yeah. That suddenly it's like, hey, bro, um, you got that leash around your neck and you're getting really effeminate. What's going on there? Yeah. Is our, if, if, you know, it's to me, it's like if, if a woman wants a partner who understands her, just like if a man wants a partner who understands him, you got you, you got to be gay. Right? If that's what you're looking for, because women are women, men are men. I don't care. They, we, it has been known forever that women are approaching the world from a much different place. Yes. Right? And the womb gives them a power that scares the shit out of men. Because, you know, scientifically, we could talk about all we want. But that's a superpower. Mm -hmm. You are growing that. It's a portal right there. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you had to go through it. No one comes to this planet except through the mother. Right. And so the mother rules supreme. And men just it scares men to death. It just always has. I've learned to live with it. Women are frightening. They really are. They're frightening because you have to be very careful how you approach them. You don't you're not frightened by their power. I mean, I'm not saying I'm scared. I'm going to run. I'm going to hide or I'm going to try to manipulate their power out of them by no stretch. I respect it. But it's just like, where the hell are they coming from? I mean, I'm not saying it's wrong or it's bad or any of that. I'm not. No. I'm saying it's very valuable in the world. I just have no idea where it's coming from. Uh -huh. Because it seems to be laden with like a pungent feeling. I wouldn't necessarily say emotion because they women are emotional. I don't think so. I think they feel intensely is what goes on. And men can tend confirm. to rationalize can confirm. it. <laughs> right? Well, there's this subtle cleverness to women, right? Like you're never really sure what they're up to. Jenny excluded. <laughs> <laughs> Jenny, can I ask you a question? Because I don't think men should talk about this. Yeah. I mean, we can talk about it, but we shouldn't be the ones to insinuate such a thing. So I'm going to ask you a question. And I want you to be honest. Okay. It's just the public who cares. <laughs> Do you see any... What you know, because we hear about toxic masculinity and all that, and you're too masculine. What do you think f there's toxic femininity out there, and what do you think it looks like from a woman's perspective? Um, well, I think part of it is the maybe unconscious controlling or wanting to 
since maybe we have this feeling of being able to create, like creating that reality and around us. But what came to mind earlier that I do want to mention is that I was reminded of the whole idea of whatever you give a woman, she amplifies it. So I feel like it's really convoluted. Like if there is toxic masculinity and women are going around going, that's toxic masculinity, that's toxic masculinity, and having some sort of emotion around it, it's just this like give and take of what's being amplified that I think everyone internally is going through. So for me, I've had to come into my feminine pretty recently in the past five years um, because of whatever those emotions were that were tapped into my masculine. So toxic femininity, I think, is maybe enabling. It's a little more subtle, right? I think like even when you brought up how you don't really know what they're up to, what came to mind is how like men kill people and how women kill people oh, poisoning. Yeah. Right. Like they'll poison or it'll be strategic and it'll be very well thought out and it'll go off over a month, but a man will just be like, boom, you know? So, uh, so yeah, toxic femininity. Um, yeah, I think it's a lot of throwing stuff in your face, mm -hmm. at least what I've done, you know? And I think that's a little bit of the amplification of what's happening collectively, what's happening around and just like, mm. just letting it out. Like, just like this burst of, of enduring something you don't think you need to endure when like, it's your choice, well, you know, it's so. like they have the ability to let, to make things grow, obviously. Yeah. 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 So, so they can make that thing grow. Right. Mm -hmm. So if there is like, when you think about making your own reality, and the kind of culture we live in that is very hyper masculine in general, mm -hmm. when that's focused on, it's amplified, even in the women. So I think it's like, you know, the violence or removing of emotions that men have, women have like maybe not acting or not saying what they want or not giving a man, you know, that they're with, for example, the opportunity to just be themselves and then to have their own power to figure it out instead of like taking and controlling, be like, no, let me morph you. Like you're actually taking away a lot of power. So it's like that evil queen type thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I just kind of wonder when, you know, the male female relationship, even on the whole, you know, even societal, it's like, what, what happened to the common respect? I mean, I, I, the elders taught me that the grandmothers taught me that, you know, I was always told, I'm like, so what's the, you know, what's the real difference between men and women? And they'd be like, Oh honey, it's not as big as you think. And I said, what is like, we all kind of feel the same things. Women deal with it in different ways than men do. And I said, what do you mean? They said, well, it's like this. Women do life. That's what they do. Men do place and they do it well. You, they're both important because you, you really can't have a good one without the other one being good. All right. So if men would stop with their damn missiles and their guns and their goddamn money and poisoning the food just to make some more money and throwing people under the bus just to make some more money and just go on and on and on. I mean, I, you know, I think it's, I'd like to see the floodgate open and the women become part of it all because they'll bring the nurturing back. Right. I mean, but it can't be women that have sold out. Right. And it has to come from that genuine place. Like right. you were talking about earlier, like I'm a goddess and they're wearing right. whatever. Right. I had to learn that. Like, why the hell is this energy being set my way in a ceremony room outside of a ceremony <laughs> room? And I'm like, I don't want this. It doesn't matter if I wanted it. It's right. something that just like anything we have, it's like, oh, I've allowed this in and taking that responsibility for me has to deal with really showing up fully as myself, unapologetic with the chaos, mm -hmm. with the nurturing, with all of that and 
not blaming anyone else outside of it. Cause I've felt like toxic femininity in a lot of my experiences in life. Mm-hmm. Um, and I had trouble getting close with women at first. So I felt that along with the other energy that I was like cultivating. Mm -hmm. So to see that, like, like I was saying earlier, like you don't really, it's so convoluted. We're not really that different. It's really just doing things in a way that you aren't, isn't natural for you Mm -hmm. is natural for me and vice versa and realizing it's not, it's also just not that big of a deal. And we're making it this big deal. I think all the bubbles out there should just have big, like no doors. Like a hotel in Hawaii, there's no doors. There's no front doors. There should just be open. You can wander in there as you want. Explore this, explore that, explore this, explore that. Now they're all shut up and they're all like banging against each other. All these different perceptions, different ways of being. You know, and and it's interesting because like when you were talking about, you know, you were getting all this attention you didn't want based on maybe the way you would dress. Right? And the argument is, well... You know, I should be able to dress any way I want and other people should not be, you know, shouldn't do that. You're right. They shouldn't. And it's very disrespectful for them to do that, to treat you like a piece of meat, to look at you like you're on the fucking menu. Yeah, that's absolutely wrong. But there's a problem with that. And I'm not saying it's and here's the problem. You cannot choose how someone else is going to behave ever. You never will be able to. And in knowing that, then you get to make your choices. Right. There's probably times where that's called for and there's times where that's not. I mean, there's a lot of ceremonies you go into and some of these women are barely wearing any clothes at all. It's like, what are you here for? I mean, I, I, I caught two of them putting on makeup before going to the ceremony. I'm like, what, what are you doing? Oh, I want to look good for ceremony. I'm like, what are you trying to do? Entice a demon? <laughs> I mean, what, what, what are you? It's that you're going to be in the dark. You're going to be puking and sweating. Why bother with the makeup? And that's what's so tricky about society is when you look at, for example, pop stars or whatever going, I can do what I want. This is my body. It's art, whatever. And it seems like it's freedom, but you're actually, it's just so subtle manipulation of like, no, it's actually feeding the exact beast that you're trying not to. And it's, it's. Well, I mean, I think, the but human... I can see why it happens though, because it's, you're trying to be in a, re- a reality that doesn't exist right now and accepting that, you know what, I can't walk around like that around people that are vacant, people mm-hmm. that have desires or instant gratification or are looking at things like surface level. Mm-hmm. Of course, they're going to see that first. It's going to take a while to get down mm-hmm. to it. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, you know, it's just I, I, I just find that you know, the minute you try to legislate how people are supposed to behave, then you've got basically human beings as a monocrop, just like corn consumers, yeah? genetically mm-hmm. modified corn. Corn. Well, consumers. that's how Mother Earth corn treated consumers. too. <laughs> so I think we all model at least like you know the trickle down effect as above, so below. Mm-hmm. Like Mother Earth is being pretty much just turned into a product. Mm-hmm. And forgotten about a little bit more than Father Sky. So I think that, you know, making yourself look like something that is whatever the feminine is that society thinks it is to be valuable and a product is a lot easier to get attention than to be the more subtle. Because you see the way femininity is, there's so many complexities to it, just mm-hmm. like masculinity, sure, sure. right? Mm-hmm. There is the like feminine, you know, older elder grandma who's sitting there doing all the dishes cooking you know marinara sauce with her hand instead of a spoon and then you have like you know like the opposite of that and it's to see those all as feminine is hard when you know even in the spiritual community it's like goddess is this and then there's a bunch of makeup and jewelry and this and it's like well so is grandma you know, Grandma's Maria over so. there. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, I've sat down with the, and I had got nothing out of those conversations other than stories about, you know, them in the fifth dimension and their chakras. But I'll go see an old woman in the mountains. She'll go sit your ass down, young man. Oh, really? You talk to me like that. And I'll sit down. 
And she would just point her finger at me, do, 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 and just hammer me all day long. And I would sit there and love it. I got 10,000 times more value out of that. Right? Because it's, again, I mean, you know, men are dressing up, playing guru, playing bullshit, wearing fucking robes and dressing in white, and having all their pictures on Instagram and the whole shit, you know, the whole thing. You know, and, and they're equally as bad. To me, I'd rather go find an old man, you know, salt of the earth, fix his old tractor in the in the field because he's actually got wisdom. These guys got a, a sales pitch. I mean, the, my feed has been recently. Demonetized? <laughs> That's well, the new thing now. <laughs> it has been all of these. We're going to train you how to be a shaman. Oh, oh, really? So you're gonna, you're going to be, it? yeah, you're going to, I mean, I'm getting no, advertisements. I don't get that. <laughs> How to be a certified psychedelic assistant. It's like, what the hell? I mean, you, you really think you're going to go learn that? Yes. You're going to go sit and what, read books and take notes and you're going to know how to navigate a, a reality that blows this one right away. There's an okay. in-step process to get there. Uh, it's a hard road. It's, you know what I think? I think it's, you got to spend a lot of time doing those things on your own first mm -hmm. with no guide, no guide. You have to be able to walk into that wilderness of the vastness that those things take you to and hold your own. And once you hold your own, you start to notice where, you know, what's, what's good. What's good. What's good. What's good. What's good. Cause boy, there's plenty of what's bad staring you in the face. And you know, you can stare into the abyss and have it stare back at you all damn night long, but you have to look for what is good. You know? And I remember there's nights when I was by myself really deep in plant medicine, just sitting there and just being surrounded by the most nasty negative vibes. Just, oh, I just, bleh, just squishing me. I just sat there. It, it's like, there's nobody around to help me. There's no, there was no one around, just me. I'm just sitting there, all of it swirling around. And all I could do was just sit there. I love you. <laughs> I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Well, that's I how I feel I in I a city you. sometimes, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, it's, like, I grew up in a city. It still has a place in my heart. Not, it's really hard to explain. It's always going to be a part of who we are, no matter how deep right. in the woods we well, go. Well, like, think about, like, way back in the day, I feel like, at least in my fantasy, in my head, that mm -hmm. cities were a hub for people to get together and learn new things. Like, oh, my gosh, that's a spice I didn't know about. And, like, have this uh, sharing of the world's whatever. Wisdom. You know? Like, traditions. Yeah. Medicines. Tastes. I think it's a privilege yeah. and a gift to be able to sit here and eat certain foods or to smell certain smells, which you don't get to do when you're up there. Right. right. So I think that's how it like started. And then of course now it's distracting or you find like-minded people that are all now it's easy. I feel like to stay in a certain level of being because it's like a you certain, think you found it, but right. you really don't. It's but a, it becomes a stagnant bandwidth and consciousness. Yeah, but like I've been there and been like, oh, this sucks. Like, city is so draining. All the, you know, EF, EMFs and like this and that. <laughs> and I'm like, actually, I'm fine. Like, mm -hmm. it feels like alone. I'm like, you know what? I love every single person here. I hope they. Make, I hope you guys make it. And then there's another factor of having a little bit of compassion for. Growing up in not a gray area mm -hmm. and seeing and observing how certain people don't have the privilege to get out maybe in this lifetime or, or that they don't even think they have the resources, which they do, they could, but just having some compassion for like inner city of the people that maybe aren't in suburbs, just like, I don't even know if it's fully choosing. I don't know if I can use that word. Cause like you do choose your life, but it's just a thing where I'm like, yeah, that's a lot is happening. It's over stimuli and eventually you want to get out, you know, so, for me. And I think that's part of what might be evil because, you know, it's like you go to, to any kind of seriously impoverished community. There's not a grocery store anywhere near that damn place. There's a Seven Eleven. There's no banks. There's nobody giving loans. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's just, it's constantly reinforced, reinvigorated in that fashion and reinforced. So you're just sending people through like a, a meat grinder, basically. Yeah, and there's no natural beauty out in those spots, too. No, you know, and when you get these inner city kids out in the woods, 
They light up like Christmas trees. They're like, oh, and they don't want to go home. They're like, I love it up here. It's like, of course you do. Of course you do. You know, that's what it's what you long for. But, you know, and it, I mean, yeah, I know there's going to be people who would be much harder for them to relocate to something that is along the lines of not destroyed nature. You know, and I think whoever does move in to not destroy nature, it's your goddamn job to protect it, to protect it at all costs. It's like here, there used to be guns going off all the time. Of the people who used to own the land. Mm. Just bam, 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 bam. So when we moved here, I mean, you have some birds, but no wildlife to speak of. Maybe some, you know, then deer started coming in, right? Now it's just like a petting zoo out here. Porcupines. <laughs> well, those those moose, porcupines are Those birds that were going off last night reminded me of birds in the jungle. Just salamanders. Salamanders, salamanders all over the place. I have see, been seeing a lot of videos lately, though, of people being like, you know, living is free, water is free, food is free, uh-huh. and starting to realize, like, no, no, I am tricked. Like, I'm going to make my own damn food. Like, right. in the middle of nowhere, you just have some soil and just start with the seed. Oh, look, I have a seed from. If I did and was able to get a real piece of fruit from not a 7-Eleven. Well, and I then think, like it's it's being – it's not impossible. Right. But the dark, the dark sorcery says right. you have no option. Mm-hmm. Right? And that dark sorcery, what is that? Well, Sigmund Freud, right? Uh, he's basically the reason why pedophilia and, you know, of any kind is as prominent as it is because he would always blame the victim. Right. And then his grandson, I think, nephew was Edward Bernays. And there that is the the wizard of propaganda. And you can read all about what he did. And then you go out of that, you get Madison Avenue. Right. And then you have the media. The media is there for Madison Avenue. It's to sell you a certain story. Right. And right now, it's like, you know, we talk about that evolutionary pressure that comes in. It's pretty intense right now. It's really intense. And they want to circumvent that into despair, 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 fear, despair, fear, and despair. You're easier to control when you're in fear or despair. There's somebody who wants to own the show. It might be a group of people. Somebody wants to own the damn planet. You know, and it's there has to be like a, a revolution of some kind where we recognize that, oh, no one should own any of this show at all. We should be free to move on it as we will. Right? And not to be, but I mean, again, that's going to that, that's gonna take a, quite a cleansing. This and is, that pressure, what's that? I was going to say, this is where I randomly want to start talking about Bitcoin. <laughs> 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 because what you're talking, I mean, we talk about the hood. You, you're born into the hood. How do you get out of the hood? It's not very fucking easy to, no matter who you are. And that hood is set up as a system. And behind that system is the financial system. The reason the banks aren't there, that's on purpose. The reason the rap music glorifies gangsterhood, the reason that you can't get a loan, you can't get ahead, you can't move to the right place, you, this whole system is rigged through taxation. just And interest. And interest. You just take a, take a hit. Every time you train some money, they get a take. Mm-hmm. Every single time. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's, that's deep evil. And that's the extraction of life force from humans. Right. Because why are you misery? If you had abundance and everything is cool, would you be so miserable? Or if you were like uncertain about what's going to happen tomorrow, are we going to die in nuclear war? Or is there riots? Or are they going to cut off the food supply on the East Coast? Right. Is... Like there's a whole bunch of things that are generating fear and it's all around Mm -hmm. finance. It's all around money. It's all around, can I provide for myself and my family and into the future? Like, yeah, we may make it this year, but 10 more years, shit, that's going to be hard. Yeah. You know, you've got a whole faction of people saying, we got to tear down the system. It's like, so where are you going to get your food? Because you talk about tearing down the system, you knock out one major component, the whole thing falls. It does. So where do you get your food? Where it's you from your neighbors. neighbors. It's 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 yeah. it's <laughs> it's so co- it's so complicated. It is, but if you actually take people, if you take the thieves, if you, if you stop the thieves from thieving, mm-hmm. things get a lot less complicated. Mm-hmm. And so those You're not allowed to punish the thief. No, but here's yeah. here's here's what does oh, punish the thief. Yeah. The way the thief gets to play is get they get to print money for free while everybody else has to work for it. Right. 
That's the thievery. That's the slavery. We print as we send 60 billion, 60 billion, 60 trillion, 60 billion to Ukraine again last week. We have zero money to help the people that are dying and suffering in our own country from the hurricane. And they are not sending helicopters. And that's deep evil. That's yeah. deep evil. Yes, it is. And that's based on this monitor system. If we take away that printer press, everything changes. And the only way to do that is Bitcoin. So I wonder, you know, and it's true. The way I think evil lurks, and the, how clever it can be, is you think you're doing what's right. Mm -hmm. Right? You, no matter, you know, we have to send missiles to Israel. No, actually, you don't. You need to sit all these people down and go, look, all right, let's come to some agreement here. Yeah. Because we are all human beings. We all have families. We don't want to watch our children get blown up. No. You know, in America... It, not the kind – who knows? I mean, I don't think it's – it's not Americans. I mean, like every other country on earth, like Russia, we don't think the Russians are free. Well, you're no more free than, than they are. No. You just have this illusion of it. We were told we were. Yeah, you were told you were, we're so you believe you are. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, and the only thing you're free to do is uh, wh whatever is – it's socially acceptable within the bounds of the system within the bounds of what you're told you can and do and don't let your speech go hateful because we're going to redefine hateful until you have no more speech right right you know but <laughs> it's this conglomerate of i mean are they even people do these people even know what they're doing you're sending weapons of mass destruction and you're giving them to other countries mm -hmm. so they can go blow up some people mm -hmm. and, that. yeah and it's like you you play the scarcity game on us constantly. Mm -hmm. It's just not true. There's nothing true about it. Innovation, it, humans, mm -hmm. that's one thing that they've got going for them. They're innovative. They can make things, they, you know, they can, they're capable of such incredible feats. And they're fucking psychos. Well, the, yeah. It, it's weird. It's like you're, Don Juan talked about that. Where he's like, you know, it's, it's kind of mm -hmm. strange. Look at the things human beings are capable. Look what they can build. Look what they can do. But then look at their religious beliefs. It's dark as can be. It's, it's morose. It's ugly. It's, you know, put the finger down. I mean, I know plenty of people leaving London. You know, our friend Charlie, Charlie Bewley, he was talking to him one day. He's like, you know, here's the problem with, with Britain is if you want to go out and do something and you're really motivated to do something, you're just going to get a bunch of people just naysaying you. Trying to tear you down. No, you stay in that little flat. Yeah, <laughs> you stay in those tenements off by the airport. You just live there. You, you don't try to change your life. And he said, "There's a lot of influence to just lay down and die." Mm -hmm. You know, and it's like, where does that even come from? I mean, it runs so deep, and you would have to delve into this deeper than just listening to what I'm saying. That consciousness is so vast, infinite, even. And we are subject to a very, very, very narrow thread of what all that is. And if we go venturing out anywhere, yeah, no, 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 you can, you know, you can, you can do all kinds of uh, butchery. You can do all sorts of forms of perversion. We don't mind. But don't you dare reach for something beyond what we all accept as reality. You know, and, and that's played out on such a deep level. Your reality is marketed to you, right? And, and you won't know that until you shut everything off and just live in the world. Who cares? The, all the, It's like, are you living in the talk of the world or are you living in the actual world? Because the internet is just the talk of the world. That's all it is. It's just one giant mind fuck, really. It's, it's, it's insane. Right, and then you have the world that you're living in, where your food is grown, where the sky is blue, where the wind is blowing, there's rain, there's snow, there's people, there's animals, there's things to do. It, it, more of that brings you back to the ability to expand that consciousness again, right? Because that reality that's being fed to everybody, there is no energy left. For people who are trying to follow that every step of the way, you got no energy left. It's all consumed by that machine, what you call that machine, right? And it feels like that. And I think a lot of people are starting to see, but it's like, what do you do? How do you get out of that? How do you start living a different kind of a life? Well, you know, it's like I didn't have the privilege of leaving California. 
I knew if I didn't get out of there, I was going to go completely fucking mad. I knew it. It's like you have, I, you know, I'm sitting there and I just keep hearing the voice in my head. You have to get out of this place. It's too distracting. You're too embedded. There's no way for you to do this deeper work on, you know, why you're angry, why you're frustrated, why you're depressed, why you feel less than, why you feel like there's better people in the world than other people and all these comparisons and bullshit and all that. You're not going to be able to do that while you're here. This is taking all your energy, all your time, all your money just to be here. So me and me and my ex-wife, we didn't have kids yet, but we had a dog, a cat, a Hyundai. You know, it it used to be real small back in the 80s. It was an 88 Hyundai. I don't remember what kind of Hyundai it was. But everything we owned was in it. We had 400 bucks. Moved to Colorado. Just left. So, you know, I'm not saying, you know, is that what people should do? If you're called to, you better. (laughs) You know, it's like, because I was like trying to save up thousands of dollars to move out. It just wasn't happening. Every time, you know, I get more money, it would just have to go to bills and this and rent. And it's like, we're never, and I looked at her, we're never going to get out of here. Do you understand that this reality doesn't let you out? That you have to make an escape. You have to escape this. Right. And so we just, you know, middle of the night, I didn't even have enough money for the registration of the car. So over to the neighbor's house, peel their sticker off the plate. <laughs> well, I didn't live around him anymore. Besides, he used to steal my laundry. And I put the <laughs> put the sticker on my car so my, it looked like my registration was good. And we drove out to Colorado. Stayed in a hotel for a month. Yeah. Yeah. It was 200 bucks. So not a nice one. Yeah. And then just kind of made our way. You know, after that, we moved into a house in Woodland Park. And it was a guy and his wife, older dude. Don Cox was his name. And they raised wolves and German shepherds. And they had a lot of wolves. Most of them ended up at the wolf sanctuary. And he had taken his two-story house and cut off the staircase and put an apartment downstairs. So they were renting the downstairs part. And they would fight like cats and dogs. Like, mad. And me and, me and Jennifer would just start feeling this heaviness. And then, you know, we'd start interacting with each other in this heaviness. Mm-hmm. And then one night, I'm, we're laying in bed. And there's like a vent from the heat, you know, the central heating, the vents in the ceiling. And I'm seeing this black ooze dropping out of it as they fight. And I'm like, that is what is getting in here and just coating us. So I told her, hey, we, we have to leave. She's like, we can't do that. We can't do that. We can't break this lease. I'm like, we're not staying. We got to get the hell out of here. Packed up, left. Two days later, he shot him his wife twice and shot himself. Yeah. yeah. So it wasn't easy. You know, from there, we went to some shithole house in Cripple Creek from like the 1800s. You know, it's like your heating bill is $1,000 a month because there's very little left of that foundation of the house. It's cold, just blows up in it. The house next door to us is completely haunted. And the old <laughs> hotel across the street is completely haunted. The whole town is completely well, haunted. Well, everybody murdered everybody for gold back in the 1800s. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was over and over again. Yeah. The house that we ended up living in was this couple from California bottom and they bought two of them and they were going to redo one of them. And so we went into the basement, what was really a crawl space under its own pillars and we were going to redo the foundation. So we're digging out, we find this suitcase, right? And it belonged, that house belonged to a lawyer way back when. And so we opened the suitcase and it's all his case files. And you're right. Murder, 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 murder. People killing each other over the gold. You know, it's like, wow, this is quite a crazy place. But the house next door to us, you'd be sitting there. No one lived in it. The lights would go on and you'd see someone walking across the room. It's like, what the hell? Yeah. The hair in the back of my neck would stand up. I was young. I was like 22 years old. I was still kind of a greenhorn. So like, well, what's going on here? Yeah. It was pretty wild. And then from there, um, lived in a trailer in a town called Victor, which is another Also sh- haunted from what I've heard. Oh, yeah. Yeah. A lot of meth there. Right. It, it it's the kind of place where you actually see the people on the street that you see on America's Most Wanted. It's like, hey, that's you. <laughs> it's where people go to hide. You know, but it was close to Cripple Creek. That's where we worked. So we lived in the back of this motorhome for like a year, and then ended up, you know, securing good employment, get steady, started, and you know, then I wasn't really never homeless after that. We did camp for three or four years, but because we wanted to, didn't, you know, it was what we wanted to do. So we'd spend the summer outside. And then the two years with Carlos, 
Yeah, you didn't get to live indoors. So we lived outside. I just made it work. You know, so many people say, well, you know, I just have so much that it's like, yeah, do you want your peace of mind? Do you want that evolutionary pressure to be something you can work with instead of it turning into anxiety and craziness inside of you into stress? You have to decide. Is this life you're chasing that's going to end when you're old? Because it is. This identity you're carrying around, it goes with the body. The only thing that's left is awareness. Presence, awareness, and will. That's all that's left at the end. The identity you were, the, the things you did, that's all gone. I mean, you have to still work out the kinks in the energy field from all that shit you may have done. But it, it's, I don't know how else to put that. You know, it's, it's one of those things that you, so your spiritual life, that's what you want to call it. Your life, life is spirit and life. They're the same thing to me. It's what's looking out of my eyeballs. So what's looking out of everybody's eyeballs. As far as I know, there's no one that can tell me differently. It animates the body. It looks out of the eyeballs. And when you die, that's not there anymore. Is it right? So whatever that is, you know, it's like if you, that can't be just a thing you do among things. Who you actually are as a being can't be a thing among things. It should not even be a noun. Right? Being. It implies movement. Know what I mean? So it's very hard when you want, you know, when you're in this kind of work to find people actually committed to their own healing their goddamn wounds instead of getting angry about it and taking it out on other people. I mean, I've, I've dealt with that all, all the whole time. You know, it, it hap it's happening now. Like, this again. But I didn't know how to handle it. You know, when I was younger, I didn't handle it so well. But, you know, no one got hurt. I'm not a violent man. Um, you know, and I'm, I'm able to, I'm, I'm not trying to burn anybody's life down. I'm not trying, I don't seek revenge or vendettas. I understand that we're in a really mixed up world and people are going to do some really mixed up shit. But, it's a little late for the people who are just going to project onto you and they can't live up to what they see in some of these experiences they have. Like, you know, some people have to face the fact that you're a real asshole and, and they don't want to change that. Man, it becomes your fault. You just start pointing fingers everywhere other than themselves. And to me, to be deeply committed to any spiritual work, well, that's spirits inside of you. So it's deeply committed to how you feel within, how you, and, and to have, take some real care and have some real skin in the game with how you're going to act in this world. It ain't your fucking circus. It ain't your fucking stage. It ain't your fucking theater. It belongs to every living thing here. And you want your life to be better? Well, then respect it all. When we're just not there, right? I mean, that's, you know, it's like, did I try to escape society no i'm kind of trying to live in a on a reservation a preservation that when the shit house goes up in flames that there's still some sanity left that there's still hey you know yeah the world's kind of gone to shit but hey we can still grow our own food you know we can still go hunting and still grow people correctly mm -hmm. we can still be genuine human beings full of courage and understanding we can still be mature and wise we don't have to go off the deep end with everything. You know, and I think that those people are probably laying low. You probably don't hear from them much. Because they're not here to put on a show. They're here when when the shit hits the fan, the wounded. The people that, you know, they wake up and go, oh my God, what? I, uh, man, it's all been screwed. It's like, yeah, um, come on, let's patch you up and... Get you back on your feet, get your sanity back, get your balance back, get your peace back, get your well-being back, get your energetic presence back, get your ability to have some control over that mental realm a little bit better and, and live a decent life. You know, it's like, well, if all goes away, there's nothing worth living for. If it all goes away, you might find out what you're actually alive for. Right? I mean, you know, that those I've always admired the native cultures because it's so damn simple. It's a long house. Mm -hmm. Grandma and grandpa are sleeping in the back. Mom and dad are right front. The kids are on the other wing. There's a fire kettle in the middle. That's where everybody cooks. They all sleep in the same place. They all go out and gather. They all go out and hunt. 
and when they sit around and story tell, those stories are not just once upon a time. No, those stories deeply impact the consciousness, the conscious evolution of of the offspring and brings them up as warriors, brings them up as people who can notice things, right? That can deeply contemplate something before acting. You know, it's like I've had to in my life on this path that I've been on, I've had to stop, just stop, analyze. You really not analyze it, like poke at it. Feel this fully. Is this really about this? You really want this? Or do you want a Ferrari? <laughs> you know, do you want adoration from others? Do you want them to see you as your guru? Or do you want to be an honest human being that might irritate the fuck out of somebody once in a while? You know, and, I, and I've had to look at that. It's like, I know bad behavior when I see it. How? Because I used to be uh, the, uh, the, one of the masters of bad behaviors. So I know it when I see it, right? And knowing how to correct that is, is extremely important. Because, yeah, I mean, even if the world heals and it's good, what about you? Have you healed? And are you good? Or are you still bitter? Right? Or you still got a, a, a grudge? Do you still have a chip on your shoulder? You got a monkey on your back still. You know how many people have... I've heard that I serve medicine. Oh, do you? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm an integration coach. I counsel people and they're a train wreck. It's like, how did anybody take you seriously? When you see the life you're living, you don't even have your own house. You can't even take care of yourself. And you're giving this person advice. It's like, I remember meeting this woman whose daughter was 24 and she was a Dakini and she was a healer and a teacher and a seer and a knower and here to, as a star child to bring, She's given this 35-year-old woman advice on how to raise kids, and she doesn't even have any. That's the world we live in. But this, there's how deeply have you actually dove into the internal part of yourself to really understand what's motivating you? You know, when you get on Facebook and, hmm, <laughs> what, are you, what are you really doing? What, what does that have to do with you being alive? You want to show off? Is that it? Do you need adoration? Do you need people to like you? It's, it's not the, there's no other animal playing like that. You know, there's, there's, I'm sure there's, you know, there's things in nature where the birds of paradise. Come here, Chica. Right? They do their little dance. Yeah, they, they build a great show. <laughs> yeah, they put on a great show. And humans do too. But that's it. It's a show. We're all human. As far as I know, everybody still poops. So they still have shit coming out of them. And the ones that don't are full mm -hmm. of shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I I always appreciate, like, you know, that's what I've always appreciated about Eddie Vedder. Yeah. He's just a regular guy who doesn't know how to talk well. <laughs> <laughs> he talks too much. And he sings like a like a freight train. I mean, my God, that is amazing. But when he starts talking, he's like, I can't understand a word you're saying. I don't even think you understand a word you're saying. We don't know half the lyrics of the songs. Either. I just if if, if if you know if Eddie Vedder ever gets a hold of this podcast, yeah, if he ever watches this, you know, it's hypothetical, obviously, probably no chance of that. But here's my advice, Mister Vedder, and it's the advice Carlos gave me when I was young. Do you know? If you sip your wine instead of gulp it, you might be alive a lot longer to enjoy it. And you got a lot of people who, you know, for better or for worse, they feel really good when they go see you. It's like a light in their life. It's like a day mm -hmm. where all their bullshit's gone and they're just going to rock out. And you have a responsibility to be doing that at 80, just like Mick Jagger is. Oh, okay. Don't be like Jerry. He <laughs> really died die. at 53 years old. No one was ready for that. No, no. Jerry Garcia, I man, it's like dude, he was just got his number speed. one hit. Touch of Grey is the only number one hit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He just had it. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of interesting. Isn't mm -hmm. it? Have we solved your problems? Have we solved your problems? Have we solved mine? We didn't get to mine. <laughs> What's your problem? <laughs> no, I was just saying that. What should I do? Let's put me on the hot seat. Let's find out. You want to be on the hot seat? I don't know. You're, 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 I, I will say this, and so the whole public knows. Uh, you're my dearest friend on this planet. Hmm. You have been with me through thick and thin. You have 
completely accepted me for who I am, as I have you. And you don't find that too often. <laughs> no, you I really don't. Look for and the fact that you're as excited <laughs> about doing all this as I am is super awesome. Matter of fact, a lot of times you're more motivated about it than I am. Really? Which is nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. you know, for us being the elders, because we are elders, I mean, we should probably start acting like it more. Huh? I'm trying. The Stop best using, I can. Stop using it's the It's hard when Jenny's around there because like, it's just, <laughs> she's so ridiculous. I'm going to buy you okay. two clown noses. It is earth school. <laughs> but there is recess. And you don't do recess when you're in math. You don't do it just, but you, but if you're trying to do math while you're in re, recess, I say recess is controlled folly. There, yes. Right. That's, so if you, can, if you can, if you can control it, session. that's yeah. school and session. Yeah. You know, it's yeah, like true. when you have your focus and you know, and you're deeply connected to the soul and you're giving it attention, you're giving it your will, you're, you know, you're giving it your intention. You're really with it. You know, you can't do that all the time to fry. You got to do that in ink. You got to build. You got to build up. You know, you don't just go from here to there. DMT will do that to you, but it's not like you're going to really figure anything out. Or remember just, it. Or remember it. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, so the stretching, the stretching. And then there's times where, okay, that's not really the central theme for whatever's going on. So how much can you be, and you're never outside of the view of your own soul but you can pretend that mom and dad are gone right in those moments you can play a little more how much are you going to play before you realize this is play and you might just okay this is a nice ending spot and go back to mom and dad are home again you know kind of thing I mean, well there's happens. also play that is very serious too at the same time right mm -hmm. like you're holding that intensity that you're talking about but you're in that play state it just goes somewhere else. You like learn different things in that state. It becomes a roast. Kind I don't of get it. What a roast? Well, you mean like a because like in that serious you? play, it's like to me, it's almost like hide and go seek. So you you are in a serious play with somebody, and you start picking up on cues that they don't know they're dropping. Mm. Right? Oh, did, what was that? What? No, that, that, that. Oh, I get what oh, you're saying. Oh, shit. You caught me. It's like, yeah, let's talk about that. That to me is serious play because if you're going to get all cranky in that and judgy and weird, that's going to turn into an argument. Yeah. Right? We used to have this guy that lived here. His name was Max. Also, he, he, he goes by a lot of different names. Mm -hmm. He's got a lot of aliases. But he, he would, we would have a, a house meeting. We would all sit down and just kind of, you know, if there's any air clear, we'll do that and all this. This son of a bitch always brought conflict. <laughs> and he's just ferocious, like a like a like a dog with rabies. Just going after everybody. About bullshit. Meanwhile, this dude is just really not participating unless he absolutely is gonna benefit from it. So he would show up at our gatherings if there were cute girls there. But Nah, if there were no girls there, he didn't care. Right? Treated most of the people up here that would come, you know, not the people who live here, but the people, you know, our friends that come to visit, he would treat them, kind of, eh, just brush them off like they didn't count. Always played like he was the commander chief. It's like, and he, you know, treated the women around here like dog shit. Utter dog shit. And I, you know, I put up with it, and I put up with it, and I put up with it, and I put up with it. And I just got to the point where, you know what, man, this, this is ending right the fuck now. Because, you know, for me, I'm not trying to create an ashram, a commune of any kind. It's a place where people who are still human, who haven't fallen for the transhuman bullshit and haven't fallen into one side against the other, that they've remained human and they're keeping all of that division outside of their interactions. Right? For a place for them to come and fucking breathe. It's not, we're a healing center. We're going to heal you. No. You heal yourself, damn it. Physician, heal thyself. That's what the man said. Right? So do that. And I, to me, I think if you're not going to get to brass tacks, what's real? What are you going to heal? Nothing. You're just going to frolic and play and frolic and play. And there's been a lot of people who come up here with that idea. Oh, I get to frolic and play and there's no responsibility. It's like, yeah, so you're going to watch us cut the firewood. You're going to watch us work our asses off every day as owning 100 acres of land. You don't own it, it owns you. 
There is. That's why you need more people around because it owns you. And now at least we can go do something. You can go visit your parents in California and all your shit's taken care of. He can go visit his parents in Utah and he doesn't have to worry about everything falling apart or things not getting done. Tom mm -hmm. can go traipse all over the goddamn planet. <laughs> right? And which it's Sometimes great. Take but everything's held in check. Yeah. We go to the jungle for a month, come back, just drop right back in. Everything's been held down. That that's what you want. This oh we're a spiritual community, we're gonna have a cuddle pub. What the fuck are you doing? How is that benefiting anyone? And how is anybody learning from that? So your kids watch you do that cuddle pub. They're like, oh, is that what it's about? Just Man, I mean, where's the drive for like, what is looking out of my eyeballs? It's the ultimate question, you know, and I think that humanity is ripe for it. And I think they're going to probably be pushed to a place where it, you got not much else to do except for contemplating what's looking out of your eyeballs and how horrible you feel about it or how good you feel about it or how seriously you are going to take that. Right? Because, you know, you're in one world. That thing that's animating you, looking out of your eyeballs, beating your heart, breathing your lungs, moving all the things through your body while you're not paying any attention to it. That thing does, it, it changes form, but the energy remains. It doesn't go away. You don't just fizzle off into ash. Energy is never is depleted in the universe. You cannot deplete anything. It, you can change its form, but it all goes back to energy. Right? And that... Ever since I was a child, that's the only thing that I was ever really all that interested in. And I did a lot of different things, for sure. I've had a very adventurous life. I've been all across all kinds of avenues, you know, from the businessman all the way down to the homeless people on the side of the street. I mean, I've, I've mingled with it all, you know, and it's like, but ultimately the only thing that's ever interested me is how can I have more of what I already have inside, right? Because I have perception. That's cool. I have energy. I have a sensation of feeling within, not necessarily, you know, the five senses, something bigger than that, that makes this expand and makes things light up. It makes it that when I interact with someone else in that space, it's like magic. And that's what's fascinated me my whole life. And I find that the best advice I was given is if you really want that, that higher state of presence, then work your ass off in the physical world. Just work. When, it, when it's time to work, work. And when it's time to really dive into that connection and learn more and see if you can hold it longer, then you do that. And eventually it starts to merge with your work. Right? So you're never off. Yes, you know, that's tough because, you know, you stub your toe. You step out of that. Right? You know, you, you hurt, you know, some mistake is made and you get all flustered, obviously. But it's how quick can you bounce back to just... All right, I'm present. I'm doing this thing. Right? And you'll find that there's a whole lot of satisfaction in that. I mean, you know, how many people are just afraid to do any work when they come up here? Oh, that's grueling. It's like, no, it's refreshing. Your body likes it when you do that. You know, otherwise it's going to decompose. You know, it's like so. And I'm not saying value one over the other. Value the whole thing. Who you are in the world what it is that you actually are as being, what you are as consciousness, what you are as life, what it's granted you. Take it deeper. Take it more seriously. And then when you're in the world, make sure your acts are peppered with the reality of what that is, the knowledge of what that is, the wisdom you've gained from that. Infuse your acts with that. Right? I mean, I. It, it's just been in my nature to be a fucking protector from fierce, ferocious protector, right? Which can be overbearing. I get it. it can be like, you motherfucker, watch yourself. You know, and, and it can be like that. There's no doubt about it. You know, I, I wouldn't deny that, but it's, I feel like the, the need to protect life and sanity and peace is of the utmost importance right now. And it's like, I just don't want, I just don't drop my guard that much. You know, being up here, it, it's easier because I trust everybody around here. I can drop my guard. But, you know, as I go out in the world, the, the, the kind of maturity and wisdom I try to bring is not, let me tell you about infinity and the loss of God. Please do. 
you know, or preach on a street corner. It's mine is more of I br I try to bring the presence of protector. That as long as I'm in this room, no shit's going to go down. That isn't going to be noticed beforehand, right? Like, okay, this is about to pop off. Let's y'all need to go. This is about to pop off. And I've I've done it. I mean, I've been in places where. Yo, okay, I've had now a room full of people. You guys all need to leave. It was, we were going to a, a rave. We were like 20 years old. And it was uh, Timothy Leary's rave. <laughs> right? So it was a big deal. But the raves, the way they used to go down is because cops would want to bust them. Right? Because there's a lot of ecstasy, LSD, you know, whatever's going on there. And a, you know, that kind of thing. So what they would do is, you would buy your ticket and then you'd wait. And then after all the tickets were sold, they'd tell you where the location was, right? So the location wasn't given out prior to the event because that way the cops don't find it or it takes them longer to find it. So the tickets were being sold at this place called Lip Service, which is on Melrose Avenue up in Hollywood, right? It's the, it's the garment district of Hollywood. And we're standing out in front of this building and everybody's bought their tickets. There's hundreds of people there. And the lady comes out of the store to inform everybody that tonight's event has been canceled due to not being able to secure a location. So everybody's all right, well, give us our money back. Oh, we won't be giving money back. Right? And I'm watching, you know, and people aren't leaving. Right? And then all of a sudden, I just, you could feel it where things turned. It's like, okay, we are now in a whole different reality, a whole different environment, a whole different motivation for what's happening here. It was party time. Now it's destruction time. So there was like 20 or 30 people standing right next to me. Like, hey, just so you guys know, this place is about to pop off. Y'all, we just need to get the fuck out of here. Everybody starts running away, gunfire. Then there's, the windows broke. People were stealing the clothes out of it. And gunshots just going off left and right. You know, and, and so... I mean, I, I, it's weird. It's like I try to enjoy myself, but – and I'm not a vigilante. It's not that. I won't – unless someone needs to be confronted, I'm, I'm just going to try to keep the lid on the pot. But that I have that vigilance everywhere I go. Well, what I'm getting you're saying is like the work doesn't stop. Never. <clears throat> Never. I mean, I want to ask Carlos, when is this finished? Like, first of all, there is no finish. There's only continuation. It's like, oh, geez. Well, that's like living a city, like you said, from what I got. It did not get easier necessarily, but it was your quote unquote only choice because you were going to go crazy. So it's like I've experienced that. It's like, oh, I'm going to like go on this path of freedom. It's not going to be all rainbows and sunshine. No. It's a lot more destructive of the things that you eventually do want destroyed, right? Like certain attachments and all of that, but it's going to be quite the ride there. Right. And so I think some of these people that <clears throat> get in a situation like Max's might are people that made that initial step but then afterwards has not been like accepting of the, the treacherousness that that path can be until you're at the top. Right. Right? Right. Cause then it's, it's a blaming of everything else. Like mm -hmm. you still, you're still you when you leave the city or leave your old situation or leave your old life. Mm -hmm. And perpetuating that or letting go and letting it get, it just doesn't get easier or it doesn't give up. It gets easier, but it doesn't let up. I, I think the easiest thing you can do is just move to the mountains and let it just burn it off you because it burns that city fight kind of arrogant little prick right out of you. I mean, the nature tests you up here big time. You know, it's rough because, <laughs> you know, it's like uh, middle of winter, you ain't going anywhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's like, what are you going to do? Oh, I, you know, I'll read a book and sit by the fire. Oh, hell you will. You'll do that for like an hour. Right. Well, seven, it's like Dieta. It's like, days, oh, I'll yeah. sit there and sing. It's like, no, you're doing some work. It's mm. like day, night, dreams. Like all of it is right there with you. The Dieta, I, you know, 
I'm looking forward to going back again because there's just something about that, right? Because you do. You think, you know, your first time you ever do one, you're like, oh, yeah, I'll just, you know, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do this. No, you're not. You're going to sit there and chomp at the bit. You're going to sit there and shake all that shit out of you. You're going to get all that contamination out. You're going to get all that putrid energy out. You're going to replace it with something. You're going to wash to get it. It's almost like having your intestines taken out of you, washed, and put back in. To have your life force kind of just laying there on your tambo floor, and it's getting washed out. The ants are eating the crud off of it. Everything's just gone after it, and then it just it goes back in you, and it feels better. Something in my being knows, like, as soon as I drop in, it's like, this is all... It's just all beautiful. Mm -hmm. And it's like, this is what's supposed to happen. Just like if you're sitting in the mountains or moving into a trailer and like, <laughs> oh, this is, what did I get myself into? Like I've sat there and I'm like, what be. the hell did I get myself into? I have 30, 29 days left, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> <laughs> and then, but like there's something inside that's like, this is what's, what needs to happen. Well, yeah. If you're not afraid to like spill your insides out in front of yourself and look at it. It's the greatest thing in the world. But if you need to hold down and have grudges and all this conflict inside of you, and you can't let that go. God, that, I, I wouldn't know what that's like because I'm one to go, okay, let's just spill it right. all out there and look at it. Let's look at who I'm angry at and why. I mean, I spent three days doing that. <laughs> A list of all the people. It was like recapitulation on steroids. Just, okay, here's a whole list of people I just would rather <laughs> bury than talk to. Okay, why? What? And then look at like the interactions I have with them and what, and not there to blame. What is my part in this? Where did I decide that this person I should allow into my life much closer than was safe and smart and intelligent? You know, and, and that's what I would look at. I wouldn't look at like, oh, this person did this to me and I'm going to sit here. Meh. No, I'm like, how did I set myself up for that? What in this experience is am I responsible for? Because if I'm feeling anything about any experience, that's inside of me. There's only one person that can be responsible for that. You know, so it's almost like taking your energetic configuration outside of yourself and smacking it with a broom until all the dust is out of it. Right. And then after that, now you have to reinvigorate it with things that are uh, life affirming for you, right? Once you get all that conflict and confusion and anger and frustration and uh, that that shit that holds you back, once that's gone, you're just sitting there with like an empty vessel, and all you're feeling is potential, and that's dangerous too, because I've known plenty of people who came out of it and just decided they're going to fly around in the clouds. So like, yo, get your feet back on the ground. You got a life to live. You know, no, I'm, I'm, I'm a spiritual being now. It's like, oh, you know, we all are. Yeah, so go mow some grass, dude. You know, no, no, I'm just going to float around. <laughs> you know, so, and, but that was never what it was. It was, oh, okay, so now that you've reinvigorated yourself with what you want to do, the things that are important to you, the things you know your soul are telling you to do, let's go see how we can really focus in on that. And check ourselves when the distractions come in. Not to say that, you know, some distracted time is fine. Otherwise, you're going to go mad. Can't obsess about it. I mean, someone who's like 24-7 just chomping at the bed on a spiritual path. You, it's, there's a name for that. It's called obsessive. <laughs> and it gets dark. Because it's not always, the sun's not always going to shine on you. Right? It's like sometimes that focus is somewhere else far from you. And you need to hold your own in those moments. You know, I think that's been one of the bigger learning things is... Yeah. Yeah, you can reach the pinnacle of heaven. But there's going to be times where heaven is, in a sense, has moved away from you. Not because you did anything wrong. Not because it's bad. It's, okay, you're doing good. We're gonna, it's going to go over here now. And it's going to go help another person, some other group of people. And while that's happening, you have to hold your own. Right? Not go sideways. Not get bored. Not suddenly get to self-destructive because no one's looking. You don't feel like you know, the spirit's paying attention to what you're doing, so you can sneak around. You have to hold your own. Kind of like when we're in the when you go down to Enrique's, the, he does something. I, I don't, you know, I don't know if other people do this, but I sure love that he does it. There's a after about two or three hours of the ceremony when it's really intense and you're going through it, like well, she's you're just really going through it pretty heavily. Then all of a sudden he does this thing called the Olympias, and then after that is Sopolis. 
to confuse the two. But the Olympia is basically, they'll come get you. You know, he's got three people in the room working with him and they'll come get you off your mat and they'll sit you down in front of Enrique. And he has this really special, like fragrant, it's like an oil, but it's, uh, you know, I, I never really asked him what's in it. It's like, I'll take I think a bottle. He makes it. He, he does. Makes he it. makes it. Flower, water. Oh, like, hey, I want to buy a bottle because I want to support him. So I just buy a bottle from him and I don't really ask. You know, I don't want, what's the properties of this berry? I'm just some, that kind of guy. Yeah, I'm just not that guy. I'm, I'm inquisitive, but I'm not, you know, can kick some Period, period, though, right? Yeah, there's period, period. There's some other things in there, too. And I know there was camphor on one night because mm. I could smell it. And he sits, you sit in front of him and he does Olympia cleansing. Right, and so he has a shikapa, and he's singing an ikro over you. You know the medicine, you know what I'm saying? And you just feel like you're being washed out. But everybody else in the room, it ain't their turn. And that shit getting washed out, it's like a wave of that comes smacks you in the face on the way out. Some of that shit's really ugly. Like someone had a really hard night, and they're getting their Olympia. You're just sitting there going, "God, I hope this is over soon." I'm about to puke. And you need to hold your own while someone else gets their healing. It's the same kind of thing, right? And so it's like, keep quiet, no outbursts, try to keep everything to, you know, don't burping, don't play with your water bottle, because Enrique wants to focus. He's always told me that. I, I, I appreciate when you come here because the people you bring, they know how to focus. So they can be quiet. And they know how to do, you know, when those Olympias are going on, they know that the things they're feeling aren't theirs. It's what's being swept out of the person up there. And it is very excruciating and very hard to take, but it's only going to be a few minutes and I can handle this. That builds the warrior, right? That builds the one that can handle a level of suffering that most, you know, most people who haven't gone deep inside of themselves could, they, they snap apart. You know, and then you get these people in there from other countries, and it's a shit show in there. We're screaming and hollering and yelling and trying to walk out. I mean, it gets real nuts. Would the Olympia still work as well without the other people in the room? Yeah. While it's going on, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, 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 people go, I don't know why. You, you know, I, I the Reddit pages, the ayahuasca Reddit pages. Oh, fucking, oh my God. What a nightmare that is. Just a bunch <laughs> of mental masturbation. They talk about, you know, I don't understand why people do these in a group setting. It's like, do you not realize humanity is a group setting? <laughs> what, what do you think? You're on your own. You think you're just doing all this by yourself. And there's a dynamic at play when you got a room full of people, especially under the guidance of a master, a true master, not some, you know, fly by night clown shaman, you know, as someone who lives in the jungle, stays there, does his thing. He's not pretentious. He's not acting like he's the wisest guy on the planet. You know, he's pretty normal. You know, you know, he's got great advice for you. He'll always give you plans. He's not going to try to tell you about God and what you need to do. He's not, he's just not his business. You know, but when, when he does those limpias on you, it's, that's the most phenomenal feeling ever that I've ever received from another person outside of Carlos, which it felt a lot the same. You know, that's why I really appreciate Enrique. It's like, he reminds me of Carlos. He has that same level-headed, pragmatic approach. You know, he's he's in a tight spot because, you know, money's hard to come by in Peru. You know, and you want to build something that has integrity and value and something the Westerners won't be afraid to come to because, right, it's pretty rugged. It's, you know, it's not an air-conditioned bedroom with this, you know. It's a hut in the middle of the jungle. You know, and he wants to upgrade it to some degree, but, you know, it's just hard to come by money, especially when, you know, Westerners want to go to their five-star ayahuasca resorts, you know, and get a, get an animal in between. <laughs> you know, I just, to me, I, I just like going down to the jungle, make it raw. Give me that medicine the first night. Let me puke it out. Let me, you know, sit there and shadow box all the demons <laughs> trying to crash my scene. And we then, literally do it the day we get yeah, there yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. And then just start handing me whatever plant you just go here. When you say here, drink this, I'm drinking. <laughs> I'm not even going to ask. Um, yeah, is this is what you gave me. What is that? I don't even care. But, you know, it's like, do I? And it's like, well, don't you want to study the plants? I don't live there. Well, you know, and it's kind of hard to get plant material from Peru, no matter what it is. If you want to take, you know, Chitty Sanango, that plant medicine, and come up here, you try to put that in your suitcase, you're in trouble. You can't have no live plants. Right, so it's kind of hard to come by. I mean, there's certain plants that they diet down there that do exist in the northern hemisphere. 
right? So like Chiri Sanango, which is a pretty powerful master plant medicine, it grows here. Except for we call it yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Well, it's the same plant, exactly the same plant. The plants that make Sananga, they grow out in the desert. They grow out, you know, on the edge of a desert forest. They grow out here. The tabernatch bushes, they, they're not just exclusive to there. I mean, there are plants that are exclusive to there. You know, and it's like, so even if you knew about them, if you couldn't get them, what good is it? You know, I don't want to have knowledge just for the sake of it. I want to have knowledge that I'm going to use. That way I leave enough room for spirit to inform me where I need to go next, who to trust and who not to, right? Especially when it comes to drink a cup of some plant juice, you know, because we went to the, the harshest place you could possibly go. You know, we went and saw Ron Wheelock down the jungle. <clears throat> Trying to kill us. <laughs> well, that's what Evan said. I don't really think so. I just <laughs> I think, think so, he's the guy. He, the thing I respected about him is be responsible. Take care of yourself. Okay? Yeah, you're going to drink these plants, but don't be a baby about it. You know? don't, oh, my God, he's such a bad shaman. He's doing, yeah, he's doing what he's doing. Yeah, everybody's got to be responsible for their participation in anything. You know, and, and, and the plant medicine community is under attack from these self-righteous assholes. It is just so under attack. Who think they know, oh, this is how it should be done. It's like, no, even if you have a game plan, man, something can go down that you're going to have to change it all up. Right? You might have to sit there and have a conversation with someone for two hours. You're not dying. I feel like I'm dying. I know you feel like you're dying. But you're not dying. You're going to be just fine. No, no, I'm dying. No, you're not dying. God damn it, I know I'm dying. Well, I wouldn't say God damn it if you're dying. You're definitely not dying. And they wake up the next morning, like, how do you feel? I feel great. You're still here. You're not dead. Yeah, I don't know where that came from. It's like fear. Because you're part of it being in that expanded state of consciousness. The identity that we've all built is not built for that. It's built for the club, for the movie theater, for the job at the cubicle, for selling insurance, selling cars, playing music, playing football. That's what we've developed as an identity. Things we do. Right? And so when that identity is stretched, and it's going out into outer space, inner space, deep inner space. Well, at some point it's like, yeah, I'm not trained for this. And it's not. And you have to be willing to let that go. Right And just be presence itself, energy itself, awareness itself, will itself, nothing attached to that, right? And, and experience that. And, and, you know, hopefully, if you have the wherewithal, train whatever identity you have that you're going to hold on to, to implement that into its course it's on. You understand what I mean? Mm-hmm. So let the identity, yeah, let it be. Let it do its thing. But infuse it with the life force, the presence, the will, the intention, the care that is actually looking out of your eyeballs, causing all the life to be life. You know, I, we, we, it sucks that we lost our value of life. You know, to me, I think the whole world right now should be up in arms, taking all of these world leaders and spanking the shit out of them. Stop. You're killing everybody. You're trying to kill people. It's what you're doing. You're manipulating them. You're freaking them out. You're scaring them. You're selling them lies. You're making them take jabs and wear masks and not hang out with their family. That's enough. I don't know who, who what vagina you fell out of that made you think that you had the deed to the planet and how we're all going to live here. And I think that's the real battle. Mm-hmm. Not political lines, not how are we going to save the environment. Hey, you're going to die before the environment, so have fun with that. You, you nuke it all. It's like we need to save the environment. But at the same time, you're shipping missiles all over the damn place. Right? You know, it's like you have right now and you're in the White House, environmentalists. If you're environmentalists, why are you shipping bombs that blow nature to high hell, that blow up the environment? Why would you be endorsing that, condoning that? providing that if you actually think that the you need to save the environment for what for a nuclear destruction you fucking idiots and it's it's insane that we're allowing fucking idiots to run the world right it's like but they have more power than us no they don't they shit too 
Matter of fact, you know, it's like they're not people in the movies. If someone in the movies gets hit with a lead pipe in the knee, they keep fighting. Anybody in reality gets hit in the knee with a lead pipe, you're going to go down. That's just how it is. You know, there's no, you're not resilient to that. They're not. They're, it, it, the power they have is, is it's really fear. They fear us. They wouldn't want to poke in on your phone calls and know what the hell you're up to, where you're going, what you're doing. If they weren't afraid of you. Anybody who's Snoopy, what's he doing? They're afraid of their own life. They're afraid of being alive. They have no idea. They have no real knowledge of it. They have no more, no real wisdom in it. So they're like a rat, the like a deer in the headlights. You know, and I don't think that's what the world wants. I don't think Nate, there's anything else in nature that acts like that, except for a deer in the headlights, <laughs> right? And it's it's why act like that? Why be afraid? It's like you guys are so full. These guys are so full of shit. You know, it's just the rent seekers. They don't want to work. They just want you to, you know. Do what they need you to do for them to feel comfortable. You know, who are they? I don't know. There's, I don't know which one of them is actually the culprits and who's not. You know, I know they have corporate names. So they all hide in those rooms. But there's, you know, I, I don't understand why the human race is allowing this to happen. Because ultimately 80% of us, probably dwindling, don't want any of this. Don't want any war. Who wants that? Nobody. You know, and it's, but the consciousness can't expand beyond it. That's, that to me is a dark sorcery. They've locked us down to this has to happen. We're all like, okay, I guess this is what has to happen. You don't have to agree with that. It doesn't mean, you know, start a war and turn into a terrorist or, or even a freedom fighter. To me, it's just go inside. That's where it's all happening anyway. And see if there's a portal in there that takes you to a world different than this one. You know, and you might have to exist in both for a while. Right? As you put more attention and energy into the deeper internal world, then you start to, I wouldn't say vanish, but you're not as corporeal in this one. Right? And you just keep doing that. You just keep doing it. They can't stop you from doing it. Right. And, you know, you're just going to have to have some courage and, you know, know when to hold them, know when to fold them, know when to walk away, know when to run. You know, it's a good skill to have, but it's not one you're going to think into existence. You're not going to come up with some master plan because life doesn't happen as a master plan. It's pretty spontaneous. Right. There isn't this and then this and then this. These moments are all flowing simultaneously. There is no break in it. You know, so roll that way. You know what I mean? Am I making sense? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very much so. Okay. Because there's people out there who want to be enemies to people. And I don't see a point in any of this. It's like you got conflict with somebody. Sit down with them and talk it out. You know, oh, did you do something so bad that you can't show your face? Show it anyway. You might be surprised what you get when you own up to what you've done. <clears throat> right? Own it. Just own it. You've been a dick? Own it. You know, it's like, I don't, I will proclaim to people. I'm like, yeah, sometimes I'm the grumpy old man in the mountains. There are days where I'm a grumpy son of a bitch. I don't try to take it out on anybody necessarily. I just go try to chop wood. <clears throat> Five people, nine, five, seven. Just won't get it. So get your head out of your ass, people. Not you know, people in general, <laughs> right? Sometimes, because, sometimes in general, sometimes specifically. But you know, yeah. I don't nice. know. I'm. I figure. I just feel like I got a. I have had a glimpse on what humanity is actually capable of, and they think that well, you're. If they just change the way they are internally and take ownership over that and take residence there and hold that in high regard and honor and keep that sacred. It's not that your world would change. Everybody has what they need and blah, blah, blah. It would be far more intense than that. 
You get a group of people together, sit on a mountain, and suddenly they're on another planet. I know that sounds far fetched, but you know, the like, it's like that. You know, when we're all together and it's not a, a night of games and just talking, you know, you know, catching up, and we're all just kind of sitting in that kind of focused state, that room disappears. <laughs> we're somewhere else. It's like, ah, and it's not, ooh, we're crossing a boundary. No, we're just raising the presence to where well-being is kind of there for everybody. And they all feel it. Like, wow, I could sit in this all day. It's like, yeah, but we have work to do as well. You know, and keep that level head. Because, you know, there's plenty of people popping. You know, the, all those, you know, spiritual communities are popping like crazy. It's like, yo, stay out of that shit. That's not good for you. You know, if they're not doing real work, then, you know, like grassroots, salt of the earth, hands on the dirt kind of work. Eh, they're probably not worth much. You know, if they could just spin a good web and wear nice makeup and wear all the right spiritual jewelry and have all the right crystals, yeah, chances are they can't turn a screw. Hmm. Anyway, how long have we been going? Yeah. Do you got anything else you want? Anybody? Yes. There's, there's merch at the merch store. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> On the website. That's people. There's been some people buying t-shirts. Yeah. This is so I wore one last podcast. Yeah, that's right. a different one. This is a different one. This is uh, here. I'm a, I get to be a model. Yeah, yeah. should I flare up? No. So Tom, you have to talk about it while he's so standing. Like, you talk about it. It's your design. Guy, <laughs> this is your, you, this is Jenny. Did this design graphic? Design. Yeah, this is our graphic designer for the shirts. Stand up. Stand why? Up. Why do you have that look on your face when I say? She's that? embarrassed. You don't. Want, <laughs> you don't want the acknowledgement. That's what I love about you. Is you don't care about the acknowledgement. But I'm going to acknowledge you anyway because I know it makes you uncomfortable. So. There's a double edge to that, though. Yeah. I've noticed in my life of not acknowledging certain things in myself. But here's I probably another, should. One of her fantastic creations. We have an, a soft black eco. <laughs> it is actually t-shirt. really cool. It's like a black <laughs> gray. Call this phone number. My wife said, You look really good in that shirt. And I said, Yeah. I said, Yeah. Yeah. She's like, Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the conversation. Yeah. I think you were the first one for three days straight. I love it. Yeah. We were, you know what? We were at the festival, and someone goes, "That's a really cool shirt." I heard him say it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, mm-hmm. Isaac designed the logo. Uh huh. Yeah. No. I'm <laughs> Look at that logo. To you. <laughs> like I'm not going to say anything. Don't be a Tim Walt. The first one you wore. <laughs> Yeah, just take credit for it. Are there other color options? It was AI. I just knew how to talk to AI. Yeah. yeah. That's a skill. And then Jenny fixed it, made mm-hmm. it look real pretty. So. We have we have some more designs coming up. I have, I have a few more that I want to get done. So, Cause I, you know, it's like I don't – and I've said it before. I don't, I don't want to have ads. I don't want to try to sell someone's, you know, Hats. foot cream. Oh, oh or, or sell them ibogaine, or you know, <laughs> sleep medicine. Yeah, sleep medicine. You know. It's just uh, it's not really six months on the course. That, that's, that's not my that's not my jam, so to speak. You know, so if you want to donate, you can. I just buy a T-shirt. It's probably the better way. You get something out of your donation, right? So we have we do have what is it called Patreon? Yeah, but I say just go buy a T-shirt. Go buy a T-shirt. Yeah, it's you get something more for it. Yeah, it's only like four Starbucks drinks. We're like PBS, so yeah, <laughs> yeah. you're gonna have a telephone soon. T-shirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we could have a walkie <laughs> Well, I am gonna, you know, I do want to at some point here real soon start a fundraiser for Santuario and get that place back in shape because a lot of the buildings, you know, it's the jungle; it eats everything. So you could put up a building and it's gonna eat that jungle; is gonna eat it. So you know, there needs to be some maintenance done there. And, you know, they just don't have the money for it. So we'll do maybe like a marathon podcast fundraiser. And we'll just kind of put up a bunch of things that people can, you know, like we have some of these. We got a lot of these. (laughs) Right. We can auction them off. But, you know, just over cost. And then, you know, that way we can give them the money. Yeah. Because, you know, it's hard because they need a lot. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, all those centers, they need a lot. It's not just, you know. And it's not done ever. Yeah. 
you know, you can go be a guest there, but you know that there's overhead in that, you know, and it's, it, 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 they're always having to spend it, you know, pay people that are there and do the whole thing. You know, it's, it's not their fault that everything's been turned into commerce. That's not their fault, but they have to get food. They have to live. They have to pay taxes. They got to do all these things. So, you know, the, it, it, I mean, me and Tom have been supporting them for a very long time, you know, and, and, and everybody has, yeah, that's here has as well. Yeah, yeah, everybody here has. Except me. I haven't been there. Well, yeah, you will. You, you've helped in ways. No. <laughs> you know, and I think, you know, for those trips to the jungle, there's people that really need to go. And, you know, I've we're, we're shrunk, to, you know, it started off a little more expensive and we've been able to figure out how to cut costs especially like transportation costs. You figure that all out. You get people, you know, who drive and do all that. And suddenly you, you can take 500 bucks right off of it. It used to be, when we first started going there until we really figured out the transportation, it, it was $300 per person to get out to the jungle and back. Just that, just to do that. It's like, holy shit, that's insane. And now it's 30 bucks. You're riding a, in a, Taxi, mm-hmm. like four other Peruvians, is like 25 soles. Right. Which is like, what, $5? I've done that a couple Six dollars? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I mean, now we, you know, we're in Pucallpa. I mean, we know quite a few people there. You know, and we've we've tried to help out wherever we can, you know, throw. Uh, really, the only help you can give them is throw money out. You know, and, and don't have any onus on where it goes. That's not your business. If you want to help, help. Don't you go question, what are you spending it on? That's not a gift. That's not a donation. That's a expectation. And I just don't have any of those. He knows where it needs to go. Right? It's kind of like, you know, when they give, and it's been a lot of talk about this lately, and I think it's really interesting, that, you know, you got all these organizations that are going to help people. Just whatever money you've collected, just give it to the community. They know what they need in their community far more than some guy sitting in a mansion in Beverly Hills. He has no idea what the reality there is like. I'm going to bring in a school to lunch program and blah, 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 blah. Just give them the money and let them figure it out. You know, and well, what, 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 what are they going to do with it? It's like, man, if you're giving it, why do you care? If it's in your heart to give it, give it and leave it alone. You know, but yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of a, it's a difficult thing to help keep those places alive down there. You know, because it gets a little bit, you know, like those centers, they get a little attention here and there. Sometimes they get a lot for a short period of time, but it's not sustained. You know, and, and the more that these Westerners are setting up their little camps down there. So, you know what? If you're a Westerner, do it in the West. Okay. For the people who can't go to Peru, do it here. We'll go down and build a center in the jungle. There's plenty of people doing it. And they're probably way more versed at it than you are. Right. So, you know, and if you want to do like prep work to bring them down there, that's great. Do that. But don't go down and build, you know, arrhythmia. What the fuck? Really? You know, it's like it, go somewhere that it's it's a village. It's an actual curandero that takes care of the people in his village. Right. That is the man that they all look up to. That is the elder of the community. They go to the, the men, the women. There's women that are like that, too. I'm not saying it's just men. Go there. Go to those places. Support them. So spend seven thousand dollars to go to Rhythmia because you feel safe there. You, you know, and, and you know, it's like, are you supposed to feel safe? Is that is that what you're going after? Safety? Or are you going after like what ails you? Because if you go after what ails you, that's not safe. There's no safe. There's nothing safe about that. You know, if you you, you know. And, if you want your life to change, well, yeah, just go down to the real jungle and take a real cup of that. Ooh, yeah, your life's going to change whether you like it or not. You're gonna things are going to be pointed out to you that you did weren't ready to see. And, and you know, and I think that's why it takes personal responsibility to even go anywhere near the psychedelic plants, the plant medicines. There's psychedelics; those are man-made. I like the plants, nothing else, just the plants. But there has to be personal responsibility. In you can go ahead and think that you're going to be enlightened and all your fucking troubles are going to be gone. What it might show you is to have a hell of a lot more troubles than you thought you did. And whose fault is that when you don't? I didn't have a good night. I, I, all this stuff came up. I didn't want to see any of it. God damn that shaman. It's like, why is it his business what you go through? Right? They're just there to hold the space, make sure you don't hurt yourself or anyone else. That's it. And, and, you know, bring the energy, bring the, you know, the configuration of the energies that they know. 
that they are intimate with that, that blanket the room and you can tap into and clean some shit out, but don't put it on them. That to me, that sucks. And it's happening left and right. You get these women that are like, I, I felt like I was sexually blah, blah, blah. And it's like, you were walking around in your goddamn underwear. Of course, everybody's looking at you. The shaman, I didn't like the way he was looking at me. It's like, well, put some fucking clothes on them. Quit walking around in your bra. You see all the other women around here? They all have dresses on that cover them. So, you know, you want, don't want this attention. Stop. But everything is put on them. Like somehow they're doing it wrong. It's like, you know, I, there's been plenty of people who, again, their eyes were open to something they did not know was happening and they have to deal with that. Sometimes they have to break up with somebody. Like, oh, my God, I realize that I don't love this person and I don't really care for the way they treat me and I need to do something about that. You know, it's funny. Is Yeah, you should do something about that. I mean, anybody, any place you go for advice, you tell you, yeah, you need to do something about that. You know, but then, oh, they're ruining my relationship. Who is? I'm not in it. How am I ruining yours? Right? You're creating division between the two of you. If your love is strong, there is no division. So, yeah, this, this again, it's, it's all they're projecting. There has to be skin in the game. There has to be a commitment to the things you see and what you need to learn and what you know you need to carry out from that day forward. And if you have a bad night, that's on you. Well, and the bad nights seem like the nights you should be most thankful for the medicine man because – I've wondered personally what would have happened to me on some of those nights right. if I had been on my own. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, even down in the jungle, I've helped a lot of people step back from the brink of insanity. So, yo, hey, hey, brother, right? Just remember, this is just stuff you need to get rid of. You don't need to sit here and get all mental about it and have it go into your imagination. Matter of fact, just stay out of your head. Just push all that energy into the body, all the liquid. All the water that cleanses you is in your organs. Just give the energy to the body. Don't even think about this. It's like, oh, 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 thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. And they come out of it and they didn't pop. I mean, that that to me, it's like, I've watched these ayahuasca documentaries where these people are just going nuts. It's like, Everybody how does in the room? How does anybody who is serving medicine holding that space, if you will, it's kind of a weird way of putting it. You're, I'm holding space right now, but keeping a nice container, basically, you know, is it, I, I just don't understand how you can sit there and watch someone writhe around suffering and screaming and agony and terror and horror and not do anything to help them except for sit there and just go, Oh, and let everybody in the room watch it and go, Oh shit, what's happening? You know, it's, that's I don't understand how that is. I mean, all the times that you know we've ever held ceremonies, it's usually very quiet, right? And everybody's very courageous, very respectful, very present. And there doesn't, you know, there can be an hour of just silence. And you, you, you know, and you just kind of look around the room, feel the room, you know, with that other sense. And know that everybody's doing work. They're all in their own work. There's nothing that you have to bring all the attention to you for. No. You don't have to be the guy getting the attention. Let, let them do that work. Just as like, you know, you, I've been doing it for a long time. And to watch other people do it. You know, and then know that when they're about to step in something that isn't the work, it's something messing with them. You know, it's like, well, how come the shaman doesn't keep that out of the room? Because sometimes it comes in with you. And in order for them to keep that out of the room, they're going to have to tell you, you can't come in. No, aren't they? Right? So a lot of things that come out of people, it's not like, oh, this thing came in the room and fucked with me. No, that thing was living inside of you. And when that medicine brought up the intensity of your life, it brought up its intensity as well. And you got to see it for what it is. That's what was in the room. It was actually in you. Right? And then you puked that in the bucket. And I've watched the maestros, there's times where you can puke in the bucket, they leave it alone. There's other times when someone pukes in that bucket, they get that shit out of the room immediately. It's like, change that bucket up and like that. And they're on it. Because there's something in there that has an energetic vibration still that can get on someone else. And they know that. I mean, I've witnessed it. It is insane, dude. The shit that can climb out of those buckets. 
one night I was told, okay, you're cleaning buckets. I'm like, all right. So ceremony's over. Everybody's asleep. And I do the buckets right after. I don't wait till morning. So I'm doing the buckets. And all of a sudden, I I get them all together and I have them in like a bundle. And I, I it was weird. It was like I blacked out or something. And all of a sudden, I hear this voice in my head, wake up, wake up. And all of a sudden, I shake loose. And all the buckets are in a circle around me. And there's these things crawling out of them kind of staring me in the face. And I'm like, oh, shit. So you got to get that shit in the ground right now. That place, they would dig a hole, and your purge would get buried next to a tree, and the tree would turn into fruit. That's how they kind of looked at it. Take your negativity, take all that crap. And the natives used to do that, too, the ones that I spent time with. You'd dig a hole and scream in it. If you were just, <laughs> they would make you dig a hole, and you just scream in it. And then you bury it, and occasionally they would give you, they'd throw tobacco and sage in the hole. That's their tradition, and there's a lot of energetic reality to that that most people have no idea about. There's an energetic thing to that. And then they'll occasionally they'll throw a seed in there, cover it, pour water on it, and let, let that grow something. Let all that rage and all that anger, give that energy to the earth that knows how to transmute it and grow something out of it, which I always, I always appreciate it because you always feel better after that. You look like a fool. Especially when all the elders are standing there and you're in a hole going, fucking, yeah, you son of a bitch, ah, what the fuck, ah. They're just watching. <laughs> white boy's crazy. <laughs> crazy white boy. All right, we're going to wrap it up. That yeah. is episode 62 in the can. We might even do another one this weekend. It just depends. Who wants we'll this? We got some friends coming up. This oh, yeah. It's Cosmosis time. Mm-hmm. Do, 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 do. Which is fun. Do you guys enjoy it? Yeah, I do. Mm-hmm. Every month. Yeah. It's a good mm-hmm. touch base, see see friends. Get to hang out, see people you haven't seen for a long time. Uh, yeah, it's exciting. It's like real excitement. You never know who's going to show up. Yep. Yep. I always like the genuine interactions between people. Right? It's like we don't ever really get started till like 9 or 10 o'clock because <laughs> everybody's – and I don't want to stop. It's like, hey, man, they're having a good time together, right? Yeah. It's like, okay, everybody. Okay, everybody. To your seats, everybody. No. Nah. No, when they settle down, it's like, when should we start? Down. When they settle down, we'll start. If you ever feel like you're in Colorado, just give us a call. If uh, you don't smell too bad over the phone, then maybe we'll have you up. I'm a, I'm a stickler now because I know the times are in, and I know there's a lot of um, vampirical type people seeking these scenes out. I mean, I, I've been paying attention to what's been going on. Yeah, there's a lot of snakes wriggling their way into these places to take advantage of things and people. And I just won't have it. So, you know, yeah, you know, you want to come up. Yeah, we're going to vet you. I'm going to ask you questions that most people probably wouldn't ask you. So that's just how it is. Right? Yeah. That seemed too bad. That seemed no, too no bad. it just seems so, real. Okay, good. Real is good. Say say good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night, night, everybody. Hope you sleep well. (laughs) Hope this was uh, at least gave you some reprieve from something, or you maybe you got something out of it. Anyway, we'll see you next time, whenever that might be. Peace out. Ha, <laughs> <laughs>